build? That's right, build your city with three-dimensional structures in medieval society. But beware for other opponents' attacks and spreading disease. This is era medieval age. What is it about? In this video, we're going to show you what to expect from era medieval age, and if you watch till the end, we hope you can get a good feel of the game. Coming up. Tarrant. And Stella from Mipple University, we bring you a variety of quality board game videos. Now let's find out more about Era Medieval Age, designed by Matt Leacock and published by Plan B Games and Egetspieler. Released in 2019, Era Medieval Age is a dice-driven city building game in which players try to construct the best medieval village they can. It was designed by Matt Leacock and published by Egetspieler and Plan B Games. The game plays two to four players competitively with a solo mode and is of medium complexity. In each round, players command dice representing their population based on the buildings they have built. Longhouses produce peasants, keeps produce nobles, churches produce clergy and so on. Simultaneously and secretly, players perform a Yahtzee roll of their dice. Looking for resource and action symbols, but not allowed to re-roll any skulls. Then players reveal their dice and step by step will proceed through the different phases of the round. First players gain the resources that are showing on their dice. Then they must feed their population with grain, one grain per die roll. Any shortfall in grain results in moving down on the disaster track which is worth minus one point per step. Then players resolve their disasters based on the number of skulls rolled. These can be a mixed bag. Rolling exactly three or exactly five skulls imposes a disaster on all opponents, but rolling any other number of skulls imposes a disaster on yourself. This will generally result in a loss of points or buildings for the victim. Then players spend their building resources, wood, stone and trade goods, to construct buildings, at a maximum of one building per hammer icon rolled. Players move the resources down and may then place the building anywhere they like on the board. There are 13 different types of buildings available for construction, all with different costs, points and effects. Finally, players who have rolled more swords on noble dice than their opponents' swords and shields can extort a resource from those opponents. The opponents may give up the resources, or may refuse and lose two points on the disaster track. Buildings are key to the game and key to most of the points. Keeps, longhouses, townhouses and churches all yield extra dice. Farms and lumber mills produce goods each round without having to rely on the roll of the dice. Walls can be critical to point scoring, as any buildings fully within a walled section of the village score double their base points. And the most expensive buildings, markets, guild halls, universities and cathedrals come with additional endgame scoring bonuses. The game's disasters will also drive your strategy. The most efficient way to build your village from a space perspective is to pack all of the buildings tightly together. But you will lose one point per clustered building if you ever suffer the disease disaster. So building like this does come with some risk. And additionally, the two disasters which opponents can inflict upon you, either scorching or attack, can be mitigated by walling in your village making walls an effective defensive play. The game ends when a certain number of building types are gone from the supply, and this trigger depends on your player count. Players add points for their buildings, doubling anything that's inside a wall. They'll also gain a point for every book token they've rolled during the game. This is called culture and it's tracked on this track. And there's a five point bonus for having the most culture and a 10 point bonus for the largest walled area. Finally, players deduct points based on their disaster track and the player with the highest score wins. The game comes with fully 3D plastic models representing the buildings, with higher point scoring buildings standing taller above the others, making the game a much more special gameplay experience than it could ever have been in cardboard. The game also comes with rule modifications for solo play, using a dummy player's noble dice to determine whether or not you're extorted, 
and you'll compare your final score against the table in the rulebook. And that's what to expect from Era Medieval Age. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we hope that it helps you. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the like button, write your questions or feedback in the comment sections below. You can also follow us on Instagram for board game photos and reviews. And finally, if you'd like to be among the first ones notified of what's new from us, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can click on that mortarboard in the corner with a meeple under it, and do hit the bell to be notified of our new videos. Until next time!